So good morning. Now we come to the internal structure of cerebellum. So that is the surface view of cerebellum. You know the external features. Now we take a section of cerebellum. How does it look like internally? When you take a section of cerebellum, you see it is having an outer cerebellar cortex. So when I say outer the cerebellar cortex that is mainly gray matter okay and you already know the cerebellum is just like a large number of folia or leaf like structure cerebellum is characterized by the presence of fissures and folia so when you concentrate on each folia you find it is having an outer layer of gray matter termed as the cerebellar cortex that's the gray matter and into each folia you find the white matter is entering just like a branching tree pattern and that is what is termed as arbor vitae cerebelli okay so an outer layer of gray matter termed as the cortex cerebellar cortex into which you find the white matter is entering and in the central core you find the white matter and within the white matter you find another layer of gray matter that is what is termed as intracerebellar nuclei. Okay, so now concentrate on the diagram so that it becomes easy for you. Look at that diagram. You are seeing a large number of folia. Are you appreciating the folia? And in the folia you see an outer layer of gray matter. Okay, and then you see a large number of white matter just like a branching pattern of tree entering each folia. That branching pattern is what is termed as arbor white cerebelli. Fine. Now you concentrate on the center, central core of white matter. Within that you find another masses, large masses of gray matter and that is what is termed as intracerebellar nuclei. So now, grey matter in the cerebellum is at two parts. One is cerebellar cortex and the other one is intracerebellar nuclei. So now, look at the histology here. In that is the section through cerebellar cortex. And once you concentrate on the cerebellar cortex, that's a grey matter, you find it is again subdivided into three layers. Concentrate on those three layers. One is the molecular layer. An outer molecular layer, a middle Purkinje cell layer and an inner granule cell layer. Okay. So this molecular layer will mainly contain two types of neurons. One is basket cells and second is stellate cells. So basket cells and stellate cells plus you find a dendritic a large dendritic network of Purkinje cells also there the next layer is Purkinje cell layer where you see a large flask shaped single row of Purkinje cells still inner to that you find the next layer termed as the granule cell layer where you find two types of cells granule cells and Golgi cells so this is the cerebellar cortex. Now what happens is you find informations reaching the cerebellum from different parts say from the spinal cord, say from the cortex, from the medulla, from all these regions these efferent fibers <coughs> sorry the efferent fibers will be reaching the cerebellum. So, whatever be from whatever source they start, say from the spinal cord, from the medulla, from the cortex, the fibers reaching the cerebellum, you broadly classify them as climbing fibers and mossy fibers. Okay. So, these are the two types of fibers that reach the cerebellum. One, climbing fibers and two, mossy fibers. So, always remember this mossy fibers is the most numerous one it's coming climbing fibers are only few you find the fibers coming from the inferior olivary nucleus such as olivocerebellar and 
perolivo cerebellum only these two are climbing fibers rest all other fibers you find afferent fibers reaching the cerebellum will be mossy fibers so this climbing fibers will end in a single purkinje cell but this mossy fibers will come and synapse in thousands of purkinje cells fine so the afferent fibers from different source coming as climbing fibers and mossy fibers and you find a very elaborate intrinsic cerebellar circuit there within the cerebellum and finally what happens is the output coming from the cerebellum is actually the axons of the purkinje cell so input is coming from the uh, different parts via climbing fibers and mossy fibers the information finally reaches the cerebellum different neurons of cerebellum there you find a very elaborate system or intrinsic cerebellar system and finally the efferents coming out from the cerebellum is the not the efferents the efferents coming from the cerebellar cortex it's actually the axons of purkinje cells this axons of purkinje cells will come and relay in your intracerebellar nuclei fine so the axons of purkinje cell will come and relay in your intracerebellar nuclei in the intracerebellar nuclei you will find axons they are the neurons there and from there the axons coming from these neurons present in the intracerebellar nuclei will form as efferent fibers and will be transmitted to different parts of the brain and spinal cord so that is the basic pattern you find in cerebellum okay so now you know gray matter has two parts outer cerebellar cortex having got three layers do you remember the three layers fine name them one was the molecular layer purkinje cell layer and granular layer so i already told you the axons of purkinje cells will finally come and relay in the intracerebellar nuclei which you find within the core of white matter in the cerebellum so something more about this intracerebellar nuclei you should know they are four in number from lateral to medial they are termed as dendrite emboliform globose and vestigial so look at that figure from lateral to medial you are seeing first dendrite nucleus then you are seeing emboliform then globose and finally vestigial so just concentrate on dendrite nucleus it has got a very peculiar shape that is a crumbled bag appearance are you appreciating that shape in that figure dendrite nucleus is having a very peculiar shape most laterally placed in that nuclei and have a crumbled bag appearance and always remember this dendrite nucleus is the nucleus of neocerebellum okay so the efferents coming from the different parts of the neocerebellum will reach the dendrite nucleus and from there the fibers will pass through the superior cerebellar peduncle to other parts such as have you heard of dendrite to rubral fibers dendrite to thalamic fibers like that so remember dendrite nucleus is the nucleus of neocerebellum then inner to that you find the emboliform and globose nucleus these two are, are together termed as nucleus interpositus fine and they are the nucleus of the next cerebellum that is paleocerebellum fine and the next one the most medially placed one is vestigial and that is the nucleus of which cerebellum that is the archi cerebellum so from there the fibers will pass through the vestibular nucleus for maintenance so these are the uh, certain things that you should remember about intracerebellar nuclei so now read about dendrite nucleus this is the largest it belongs to neocerebellum and it has got a crumbled bag appearance and efferents will leave through the superior cerebellar peduncle namely 
dendato rubral fibers and dendato thalamic fibers fine so that is the largest nuclei most laterally placed the nuclei of neocerebellum look at that in the cut sections are you seeing that dendate nucleus having the very peculiar shape there okay now we come to the next nucleus emboliform and globus these together are termed as nucleus interpositus and they belong to paleocerebellum and the efferents from there also pass via the superior cerebellar pedicle to red nucleus so the nucleus of neocerebellum is dendrite nucleus the nucleus of paleocerebellum is emboliform and globus nuclei the last nucleus vestigial so vestigial nucleus is the nucleus of archicerebellum and it belongs to the flocculo nodular lobe so the informations from the flocculo nodular lobe will be reaching the archis uh, from reaching the vestigial nucleus and from there these efferents will be passing mainly to vestibular nucleus and reticular nuclei so i think with that you are familiar with the three uh, the four main intracerebellar nuclei now you know something about the gray matter there gray matter was divided into what all an outer cerebellar cortex and the four intracerebellar nuclei and all these nuclei are the nuclei of each cerebellum morphological classification of cerebellum do you remember archicerebellum paleocerebellum neocerebellum so all these intracerebellar nuclei it belongs to each part of cerebellum so with that we finish the gray matter now we come to the white matter so white matter i have already told you enters each folia and that peculiar arrangement is what is termed as arbor vitae cerebelli appearance and the white matter are arranged as intrinsic fibers and extrinsic fibers so this intrinsic fibers will be confined to cerebellum intrinsic co connecting different parts of cerebellum but extrinsic fibers are again subdivided into efferent fibers and efferent fibers so remember efferent fibers will be coming from different parts of say cns say from the spinal cord from the uh, medulla say olivo cerebellar spino cerebellar cortico ponto cerebellum from different parts of the cns the efferent fibers will be reaching the cerebellum you broadly classify them as mossy fibers and climbing fibers fine and remember all efferents are mossy fibers except olivo cerebellar and parolivo cerebellar olivo cerebellar means it is coming from inferior olivary nucleus of medulla okay parolivo cerebellar from the accessory olivary nucleus there so except these two which are climbing fibers all rest are mossy fibers so these fibers will be entering the cerebellum the cortex and finally uh, you have got a intrinsic circuit in the cerebellum and from there the efferents comes out through the axons of the purkinje cell layer and they relay in the intracerebellar nuclei from the intracerebellar nuclei the axons will pass via different cerebellar pedicle into different parts of cns thereby helping or pro promoting the function of cerebellum so with that we finish the intrinsic structure or internal structure of cerebellum the next part will continue in the next class so thank you